for you today. Well, how do we start? I tell you how we'll start. Let me get to some of your notice and, and, and welcome you. And then I'll get into my rant about what's happening in Louisville and elsewhere. Anyhow, welcome aboard Eric Hayes. Welcome aboard Michael Rudden. Welcome aboard Lee Grant. Welcome aboard E2247. Welcome aboard Bruce Pollard. Welcome aboard AVQ. Welcome aboard pay, uh, Paul Fleming. Thank you guys for being here and all the others that will be showing up momentarily. Uh, let's see what we got here. Egberto, one for the screen. You already are making your demands. One for the screen. That's very much worth it. So let's go ahead and put running and stuff on the screen, which says rapid sea level rise at Pensacola, Florida, half inch per year since 2010. It was one twelfth inch per year between 1923 and 2009. Now it's gone to six times that figure, half inch per year. That's trouble, especially in a place like Miami where the, the storm drains flood during high tide, sometimes in the middle of a very, very sunny day. So it's a problem. All right, continuing, we got... Common dream. Studies show abnormal sea level rise in the U.S. South, making hurricanes more devastating. A study published by Monday in Nature Communications is the latest of several recent reports to detail the rapid rise of sea levels in the southern U.S., which is happening faster than scientists previously realized and has only intensified hurricane damage in coastal cities. Scientists from institutions, including Tulane University and National Oceanographic Center in the United Kingdom, wrote in a study that mean sea level acceleration in the U.S. South Southeast and Gulf Coast has led to rate of increase of more than 10 millimeters or one centimeter per year since 2010, a rate that is unprecedented in the last 120 years. That finding bolstered a study published last month in a journal of climate by Jian Jun Jin at the University of Arizona, who found that sea level change by a total of nearly five inches in the region from 2010 to 2022, more than double the global mean sea level acceleration rate. According to the Washington Post, which called the rapid sea level rise abnormal and dramatic. Scientists who have studied the phenomenon recently say that the warming of the Gulf of Mexico, which is happening much faster in the oceans and the globe, is causing sea levels to rise in the area uh, as the water expands with heat and gets carried out of the Gulf in the ocean. Jiajun Jin uh, uh, Jin uh, reported that Hurricanes Michael 2018 and Aeon in 2022, which were already two of the strongest storms to make landfall in the U.S., were made more devastating by the higher levels of sea, uh, of sea levels in the Gulf Coast, the faster sea level rise on the southeast and Gulf Coast, so southeast and Gulf Coast, coincided with active and even record-breaking North Atlantic hurricane seasons in recent years, region study. As a consequence, the elevated storm surge exacerbated coastal flooding and damages, particularly on the Gulf Coast, it turns out that the water level associated with the Hurricane Ian was the highest on record due to the combined effect of sea level rise and storm surge. Yin told the Washington Post on Monday, the trend in the region has so far only been detected for about 12 years, but with global sea levels rising steadily, a pattern scientists have warned will continue, especially as long as the fossil fuel extraction and green gas emission persists. Soren K. Dangendorf of the Nature Communication study said the research provides a window into the future. The rate of acceleration is close to what scientists expected from sea level rise towards the end of the century in a very high greenhouse gas emission scenario. The Washington Post reacted. In other words, they underestimated how bad things were going to be, folks. Another one from Michael says, Sean Kasten uh, tweeted just over a, a year ago, Noah reported that the Gulf Coast can expect two feet of sea level rise by 2050. I've noted since that implication is that a home purchase today in Pensacola will be underwater before the mortgage is paid off. This is scary. Yes, it should be scary. Unfortunately, to the wealthy who are buying those homes, they don't care when it's time to get whipped. C'est la vie. All right. E2247 says 14 billion years. We patiently waited. For this visit here today, Egberto, thanks for you pulling us relatives together to move into greater complexity and consciousness right now. I love you, E2247. You always have a positive thought for me. You make my day. Bruce says, the right is making bold moves that the public will not buy. Dot, dot, dot. I hope, he says. 
And I am coming to the conclusion, Bruce, they won't buy it. I, I, I give Kansas as an example. I give um, Wisconsin as an example. When things really matter to people, they vote accordingly if we can make it sufficiently existential to them. And losing their rights, women losing their rights has been sufficiently existential to really turn things around. And I don't think that turn around is going to be um, anything but permanent. Actually, I think it is pretty darn permanent right now. So uh, women are going to be the new swing vote, meaning the Delta women, the women that would normally not vote for progressives are going to be the new swing vote. Uh, that's where it's going to be, in my humble opinion. Our times demand bold moves. Lee Grant, you're right. I don't know that we agree on the bold moves that you're talking about, but we're on the same track, my dear brother. Eric Hayes says, interesting tidbit. All of Mexico has only one gun shop. Permission to purchase guns legally is very hard to get. All the cartel guns and gang uh, guns and random guns come from their border illegally from the U.S. Exactly. We are a promoter of death. You are showing that to show that bad people will get guns. Yeah, bad people will get guns if we don't hold, if we don't crack down on the quote unquote good people who are selling guns because they are not good people. They are selling weapons to assassinate others. You see, I know what you're trying to do there, Brother Hayes, but it turns out that you prove my point. The evil is within these folks that produces these guns, that's where the evil lies. They create that supply. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Story via examples of gun violence with very strict restrictions on others. Again, we don't have to read about American stories. We just have to go overseas. When they, when they took these weapons of war off the, the streets, crime plummeted. There's, not a, there's no question about it. There's no question about it. So I don't need to read anything in the United States that's been promoted by the gun lobby, that's been placed in, in bold by the Powell Manifesto or any of that. Folks, don't buy the false information you're going to read in very well-designed Cato Institute, uh, Federalist Paper, uh, not, not Federalist Paper, um, the, the, Federal, the Federalist Society or any one of those guys. Disregard them entirely. They are fraudulent. All right, Eric Hayes says, follow, uh, let's see, follow the rules and can, can't let anarchy and chaos at any level in government. I don't see anarchy in government until we had Donald Trump. That's when we develop anarchy. Melanie Keelan is in the house. Welcome, Melanie, from Barcelona, Spain. Hannah Gross, welcome aboard. Hannah Gross, great to have you here. Follow the more details, health care and beauty care video tips. Hannah Gross, are you, are you here to visit us or are you here to sell something? If you want to sell something, ask me. Egberto, I have something that your audience may want. They may actually want it. May I do it on your program? You may be surprised. I may actually say yes. But don't spam it if that's what you're doing. I'm not sure if that's what you're doing, but if that's what you're doing, if that's not, forgive me for making that assumption. Uh, my comment, let's see. Michael Rodney says, I've always thought sea level rise was an inexorable, inexorable and end stage global warming problem, but it's happening an order of magnitude faster than expected. And this problem will exacerbate damage carrying tide storms. What happened with Katrina in New Orleans in 2005 will be the beginning of a trend. I'm worried about this. Katrina, I don't like to use Katrina as an example. Katrina was a failure of infrastructure because most of the most of the things around well for New Orleans that is not for the places uh, in Mississippi etc but otherwise Katrina was an infrastructure failure that we've known about to happen for a long time Lee Grant says here's some shocking news from the higher education NCAA championship swimmer Riley Gaines said she was verbally and physically assaulted by the pro-transgender protesters, which led to her being barricaded in a classroom for three hours. Gaines also noted that she was punched, shoved, and hit by protesters before being barricaded. Wokeism is a mental illness. That's not wokeism, that's violence. Wokeism does, doesn't support that. Don't mix that up, assuming that that is an accurate portrayal of the story with what we want 
with what those of us that are really, really, really woke want. So please don't mix them up. All right, E2247 says, persons are leaving Key West and other keys. Their interiors are below sea level. I didn't realize that. So you're saying they're like a cup. Okay. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, let's see. Anybody wants to see um, the... the um, I, I said before I did this, I wanted to talk about the gun issue. Um, I want to note to all of you who just so believe in the way we work with guns and the Second Amendment. What is it going to take for you to see the downside of your abstinence? In other words, how many people must die? And it's only going to get worse. I'd like to know how many people must die before we decide to take the kinds of guns that don't belong in the hands of any human being off the market and eventually molten down into where they belong? How many deaths? What's the amount? How many daughters raised without their daddy? How many mothers raised without their husbands? How many husbands without a mother for their kids? What is it going to take? The same thing you claim to feel for the fetus. Why can't you feel for the living person? Why can't we remove these weapons of war? It's a fallacy to believe that somehow you can hold on to these weapons as a backstop to a uh, tyran tyr tyrannous tyrannical government you can't we are the government we make the government and until you get that in your head god help us bruce says they didn't fix everything just what broke this time next time more will break uh well, let's see i'm not sure what you're talking about bruce i'm sure you'll tell me Michael Rodney says, New Orleans is in a sinking bowl. Yes, they are. That's why they have all the pumps. Their infrastructure isn't up to the test when sea level rises and hurricanes repeat. Miami sits on porous limestone where water pours out through the ground. Miami can't build uh, themselves up fast enough to keep up and sea walls. And the other thing about it is the limestone, as the water flows out, it actually creates all those massive sinkholes. So, you know, Miami is in trouble uh, sitting on top of limestone as they are right now. Mike Cisak says, Gaines was held hostage for three hours with a ransom demanded for her release. This is criminal actions by the pros. This is criminal actions by criminals. Whether they are transgen transgender terrorists or right-wing terrorists, that's what they are. All right? E2247 says, Some research claims Eastern Florida is at greater risk because sea is rising faster due to the warmer, hotter Gulf Stream consequences there than on the West Coast uh, side of Florida. Hmm, I didn't know that. Daniel Edo says, Egberto essentially says, my woke is the correct woke. All other woke are not doing it right like me. That's not what I'm saying at all. What you guys choose to define as woke ain't woke. That's all I'm telling you. You all decide what you want to define as woke. I won't give you the authority to decide or devise or, or claim or decide what is going to be woke or not. You don't have the right to do that. You try to do that as a form of attack. I don't, I don't buy into it, nor will I allow it to be bought into. All right. Michael Rudnick says, my own city of New York might lose ground, though it is possible for us to build a seawall to temporarily prevent some of the bad outcomes. I live about 60 feet above sea level, but if the low-lying low areas are flooded, the rest of the city gets cut off. A concern of New York, because of the way the harbor is situated, the way you have the Hudson River, etc., it's not the easiest thing to wall off, except if the river itself is also walled uh, in certain areas where, you know, I mean, we are, we are in just a tizzy mess. We are just in a mess right now. That's all I can say. All right. Our first video, and <laughs> interesting enough, I did not quite 
upload my videos. So as I'm speaking right now, I am working on uploading the two videos that I have. The first one is going to be, um, I think I'm going to do the Chuck Todd ones first. And then I am going to do the other one with respect to how a progressive allowed himself to be taken by a right winger. So let's go ahead and do the first one. Chuck Todd, let's go ahead and do that. I want to take a look at exactly what Chuck Todd did in that interview with Trump's lawyer. For a change, he really confronted him and forced him not to change or move the goalposts. And in the process of doing that, he showed the sham that Donald Trump is with respect to the hidden documents that he kept, that he held on to, that he lied to. They tried to compare it with Nixon, Clinton, Obama, etc. But it all failed because for a change, we had journalism that worked. Mr. Trustee, welcome to the press. Good morning. Thank you for giving me a few minutes. I want to start with that Washington Post report this week. Let me read an excerpt from it that there's a they, be, they believe the special counsel is looking at obstruction of justice as a crime in this situation. Investigators now suspect, based on witness statements, security camera footage, and other documentary evidence, that boxes including classified material were removed from a Mar-a-Lago storage area after the subpoena was served, and that Trump personally examined at least some of those boxes. What's your uh, client's response to this assertion? Yeah, well, that it's nonsense. I mean, look, there's been a campaign of leaks from DOJ, unlike anything I've ever seen. I was a prosecutor for 27 years. I spent 17 at this Department of Justice. I don't recognize it anymore. Former president himself, though, basically admitted to the crime. This is what he said to Sean Hannity. Well, does he have a right to these classified documents? Presidential Record Acts is, is clear. There's no, there's no vagary here. No, well, you're right, but I think you're misinterpreting the Presidential Records Act. You notice, he didn't say, I did this, I possessed it. I, he said, I would have the right. He's correct. Ex-presidents work with NARA, work with them for years, figure out what stuff they get. It took 18 years, I think, for Nixon's tapes to finally get to NARA. In this case, NARA was hypersensitive, immediately trying to pounce on President Trump to say he's holding on to things he's not entitled to. But the remedy for all of that, if you have that fight between the archivist yeah. and, the, and the former president, is civil litigation. Okay. And, they, and they jumped right past that with a very happy and willing DOJ. Well, you say that, but... They actually spent over 15, 18 months before asking for a subpoena. He signed, uh, he had a lawyer sign that he had returned all classified documents. So the problem is he actively misled NARA. So it forced a situation where they didn't know where else to turn other than the law. I mean, he himself lied via a lawyer, which has gotten that lawyer in trouble. Well, well, you, well you're, you're putting together a whole bunch of hoops that don't actually connect. Look, NARA had 15 boxes given to them in January of 2022. 15 boxes, just here it is, take it, use these for archive. None of it belongs to him. He no. has this mistaken a feeling that anything, and none of it belongs to him. Read it the, belongs to the presidency. Read the Personal Records Act, the Presidential Records Act. There is the ability of any president to deem things as personal, to say, I'm going to keep these as personal. Sure. If NARA and, disagrees, they can sue in right. D.C. That's I, not what I understand here. that, but he seems to, and you, you seem to be, I think, uh, um, maybe uh, unintentionally misrepresenting the law when you talk about Nixon. <laughs> the law was passed after Nixon. Nixon had a case because the law wasn't in place. The law uh, was effective with the Reagan presidency in 1981. Does, the form, does Donald Trump think he should get paid? Is that what's going on here? Because Nixon got paid $18 million. He wants, is he just holding these documents for some sort of financial settlement? Nah, that's a cheap shot. Look, if you, uh, uh, he keeps so, bringing up this Nixon thing. What so, other reason okay, is he so bringing it up? He has done with classified documents what no former president has ever done. I mean, you, you keep trying to say all of those situations you represent, there was actual cooperation by those former presidents to deal with the dispute. In this case, not only is he not cooperating, he is actively not cooperating. And again, he did not comply with a subpoena. That's the end of the day. That's the obstruction charge. Why didn't he comply with the subpoena? There was a subpoena for all classified documents. He did not comply with the subpoena. He was caught not <coughs> complying with the subpoena because of the, with the search warrant. It ended up turning up more classified documents. 
How do you explain him defying a subpoena? Chuck, the Democratic narrative, which you're going to draw a distinction. It's, it's between, just a set of facts. Well, let me finish. Uh, uh, let's, I mean, let's why add, call it a Democratic narrative? It's a set of facts. Because let's talk about Delaware. You've got a vice president that has documents for decades in, these, in this Chinese-funded Penn Biden Center Right. You've got absolute obstruction there because we don't even have any sort of that obstruction because he had no right to have those documents. Right. And he didn't have any. And did he refuse to turn them over when he found them? Well, I don't know. It was hidden for so many months. Again, did he did he turn them over? Did his lawyers did his lawyers turn that over without any sense of chain of custody or any sorts of has the former president turned this over? Well, we don't have subpoena. We don't have the leaks coming from. Rob Hur's investigation I, 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 to know the details of exactly how stuff. So is your defense over. that uh, to you know, hey, we think other people broke the law, so let us break no, the law. No, of course not. Of course not. I mean, I, I just think the, that the, doesn't seem to be a good defense. Chuck. I want you guys to take a look at this exactly again. Uh, r- repeat that video, and you'll see exactly what these guys should have been doing for decades when these charlatanes come to try to protect a president that should. Uh, really already have been locked up in jail. And this is not hyperbole here. This guy's a career criminal. This guy's a thug. This guy's much more than your common criminal. He belongs not in jail, but in the penitentiary. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us, please join. I want to take a look at exactly what Chuck Todd did in that interview with Trump's lawyer. For a change, he really confronted him and forced him not to change or move the goalposts. And in the process of doing that, he showed the sham that Donald Trump is with respect to the hidden documents that he kept, that he held on to, that he lied to. They tried to compare it with Nixon, Clinton, Obama, etc. But it all failed because for a change, we had journalism that worked. For a change, we had journalism that worked. I made that part play over again. Anyhow, um, Jim Ogg, welcome aboard. Another mid to low level lawyer doing Trump's bidding. This guy will be replaced within three months. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Uh, Carl Cox says, MAGA Republicans need to woke up and realize that woke claims are false. No such thing. And uh, what else we got here? Um, para ver, my own city of New York. I read that one already. Okay. Michael also says, conservatives believe that being woke means policing uh, their speech and actions when they do something racist or otherwise hateful. Conservatives don't understand that that's not being woke. Conservatives understand it's a minority position you're holding. To be woke is to pay attention to societal issues, especially as it comes to systemic racism and inequities in social justice. We progressives are aiming to or aiming for more equity in our society. If racist policies remain, you're not going to tangibly benefit. Don't be part of the problem. And I read that all out, Brother Rodnan. Thank you for putting that in some very, uh, very specific words. I read that out not for, let's say, Lado or others to which it goes into one ear and out the other because they, are, they choose to be willfully ignorant. It is for the thousands of people. Yesterday, I looked at some of our numbers, the thousands of people that listen to these podcasts. And that the wording that you have just given does make a difference. Ledo says, please explain the disconnect. Egberto says, we're all slaves. Not figuratively slaves, but actual slaves. But he wants to assure we are all slaves forever by helping those enslaving us all that way, all, the, all us take away the one thing that could free us all, oppression. If that's what you think, 
you completely misunderstand society. You completely misunderstand the corporatocracy. But knowing you, I know that you're a smart person. So you are misunderstanding this by choice. Jim Ogg says, another mid to low level lawyer doing Trump's bidding. I think I read that. This guy will be out in three months. All right. Paul Fleming says, listen, people. I said this two years ago. We're in a civil war and you are still talking about left and right when you should only be mentioning democracy versus autocracy. I mentioned the fact that the legislatures would change our democracy before we could get control of three branches of government to make a permanent change, which is sort of happening, but we still have some ways of handling that. It's not over yet, Paul. Daniel Ledo says, whoa, Chuck Todd is such a professional. He has no shame carrying, wa carrying water for Biden. I bet he thinks like Egberto that he is a journalist. Delusion comes in all colors. Well, what can I say, Brother Ledo? Maybe you're right. Of course you're wrong. Michael says, if you compare Trump to Biden in this regard, it's night and day. Trump looks, looked over the documents personally, wanted to keep some of them for who knows why, while Biden made sure the documents got back to where they belong ASAP. ASAP. Willful retention is the difference. One's crime, the other isn't. And we know why Trump wants those documents. He's likely going to, and I'm speculating here, but he's likely going to try to sell it to the highest bidder for anything that he formed that he believes have some sort of monetary value. Uh, Paul Fleming says, uh, Daniel Lado, Daniel Lado, he's carrying the water for democracy. Mike Cisek says, Paul Fleming, you're right. There is a battle, but the battle is the authoritarian left and freedom loving right. All right, let's, let's put that to the test, Mr. Cisek. Who is trying to tell women what to do with their lives? Um, I think it's... The, I think it's the right. Who's trying to tell them what drugs they can take? Hmm. I think it's the right. Who's telling them what books they can and cannot read? Hmm. The right. Who's telling teachers what they can teach or what is history and what is not? Hmm. The right. What I constantly talk about is what my brother Mike Cisek and other people on the right do is they look at the world through a mirror. You can't see through a mirror, but you sure can see yourself through a mirror. It's called projection. The things that you're accusing others of doing is exactly what your folks are doing. You're looking through a mirror. In other words, you are projecting. All right. MSNBC is trying uh, to be farther nuts than CNN. So Todd, who's already there, lets these idiots on his show for entire blocks of time. Todd got my got off my TV. Let Egberto and PDR get on to MSNBC. You know, I kind of like the idea of the independence of the internet and you know uh, the coverage. You guys can give us more coverage by sharing, sharing, and sharing. That'll uh, that makes sure that we we expand our coverage. Um, but, you know, the one thing is the podcasts do very well. Michael Rundin says, Daniel Ledo, talking about Egberto's antiseptic slavery message, I hope this comes as a simple thought. Seek equality in freedom, not equality in oppression. Carl Cox says, Mike C. Sex, you have it all wrong. The left wants democracy, the right wants authoritarian, like in Russia. Julia Henderson says, terrorist temper tantrum is a salesman, always has been and always will be, period. And uh, let's see uh, what else we got here coming down. We have another video that's going to be ready to be queued. But before we get there, what I would like to do is bring up, uh, what is it called? Uh, Substack. Bring up my Substack with the item that I was unable to cover today on that show because we ran out of time. We had some wonderful callers, very, very smart callers. The title of my show today at, at KPFT was Abbott to Pardon MAGA Murderer. I want you guys to think about that. This guy was convicted by a jury of his peers. And El Señor Abbott now wants to pardon this guy. So he's forcing the commission. He's directed the Board of Pardons and Paroles to go ahead and send him papers 
so that he can pardon the murderer in Austin, Texas, who shot a person in cold blood. Uh, the other subject that I had wanted to, to uh, cop, cop, you know, carry at KPFT was Clarence Thomas. One always wondered why Clarence Thomas voted the way in which he always has. He even supported rulings that could potentially harm his own interracial marriage. Well, when you're on the take from the MAGA side of the plutocracy, it is not a hard thing to do. ProPublica recently released an expose that exposed Thomas' corruption with MAGA billionaire Harlan Crow. For more than two decades, Thomas has accepted luxury trips virtually every year from Dallas businessmen without disclosing them, documents and interviews. A public servant who has a salary of $285,000, he has vacation on Crow's super yacht around uh, the globe. He flies on Crow's Bombardier Global 5000 jet. He has gone with Crow to Bohemian Grove, the exclusive California all-male retreat, and to Crow's sprawling ranch in East Texas. And Thomas typically spends about a week every summer at Crow's private resort in the Adirondacks. The extent and frequency of Crow's apparent gifts to Thomas have no known precedent in the modern history of the U.S. Supreme Court. Some of these vacations would have cost over a half a million dollars. Many Democrats are starting to call for action against Clarence Thomas' sales of his Supreme Court vote. Sixteen Democrats signed a letter that pointed out the following. A proper investigation should inquire who accompanied Justice Thomas on these undisclosed strips. Current reporting shows at least one individual active before the court, Leonard Leo, who played an instrumental role in the appointment of several members of the court and whose dark money front groups funded ads for their confirmations and how they appear before the court. We have reason to believe that Mr. Crow himself is connected to multiple groups that have filed amicus briefs with the court. Yet, the public has no way of knowing who else with interest related to Justice Thomas' official duties joined these trips. We have a few pictures, but that's it. Just last year, a right-wing activist admitted to coordinating a previously undisclosed 20-year, $30 million judicial lobbying campaign at the Supreme Court. As part of this operation, this activist reportedly coached wealthy donors to wine, dine, and entertain conservative Supreme Court justices in an attempt to embolden the justices to write unapologetically conservative opinions. These donors apparently financed numerous expensive dinners with Justice Thomas, Alito Scalia, and their wives at Washington, D.C.'s hotspots and hosted at least one justice at a private retreat. A, according to the activists who led the campaign, the donors involved in this lobbying effort were even able to secure advance notice from Justice Alito of the Supreme Court's 2014 decision in a pending case. While the court called that concern uncorroborated, there was abundant corroboration that the activists knew in advance and communicated that knowledge. Fifth, the, the episode two has never been investigated. Over the course of the past year, Justice Thomas has participated in numerous cases implicating his wife's activities related to the 2020 election and the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Justice Thomas' failure to recuse in these cases raises questions about whether he violated both federal law and canons of judicial ethics regarding conflicts of interest and recusal. It has been said that he knew nothing about his wife's activities that is an assertion of fact that can and should be investigated and would be in the ordinary course for other judges and officials. Folks, it is time to impeach Clarence Thomas. He is a pathetic example of what a Supreme Justice should be. Of all the terrible justices, he is in fact one of the worst, as he shows he's on the take. All right, uh, Michael Rodney says, Mike Cisak is pushing negative freedom, personal liberty to do what you want, so long as your actions don't impugn on others' liberties. Not understanding the concept of positive freedom, 
creating a society with economic benefits geared towards the goal where every citizen thrives. Thank you, Rudden, for those words. Mike Cizek said, democracy is mob rule. I mean, listen to what we hear from Mike Cizek. He doesn't believe in democracy. Democracy is mob rule. It's republic that we should be working to keep this assures individual rights among the people wrong. Democracy works with a good constitution. The Bill of Rights protect the rights of the minority and the majority while the majority continues to get what they want as a majority. And the majority isn't fixed. A different majority may want certain things than another different majority. That's democracy. To support, to, to claim that democracy is mob rule actually speaks of wanting aristocracy. Let's be clear. If you think having the people decide, the, the, the democracy does, however, require a level of an intelligent population so that ultimately speaking, uh, what we get is uh, uh, what I call um, uh, that there's this, this kind of thinking, crowdsourcing in thought usually brings better answers from an informed populace. All right, let's see what else we have here. Daniel Ledo says, really, Egberto, Perry killed in cold blood? You are not that dumb, so you are simply trying to manipulate the conversation, but that's what propagandists do. No, he killed in cold blood. He purposely, purposefully drove into a crowd. When the crowd started to really get on his car for trying to run over people, he saw a person with an AK-47 who had the right, as he did, to carry a gun, which is why I don't like guns in the aggregate, who had a right to carry guns. He decided he saw that guy with a gun and used it as the opportunity to murder that guy, claiming he thought that guy would have shot him. Well, number one, if he had not driven into the crowd, that would have never occurred. The guy is a criminal the guy is a thug. The guy is a murderer. And that's where it's at. Lee Grant says, Egberto, if you can prove nexus between Crow's activities and Thomas' decisions, prove it. Otherwise, this is another high-tech lynching. No. His decisions prove it. I don't have to prove current, future decisions. His, all his past decisions prove he's on the take. Period. Punto y final. Okay. Daniel Ledo says, the neo-Marxists are so pissed they can't kill all the babies, they're now going to try to remove a Supreme Court justice. I hope they pursue with the gusto. Actually, I think the ones who do the killing are the people who kill people that are alive, the ones who deny them health care, the ones who deny them the, uh, the access to, to uh, care for their kids, the access to care for their parents, the access for child care. Those are the ones who kill. Uh, let's see, Carcox. Thomas is a major league corrupt U.S. Supreme Court justice. Other conservative Supreme Court justices are corrupt too. Thomas is the leader of this corrupt group because he has proven that he's purchasable by a bunch. All right. Uh, Neo Maxim, welcome aboard. The gun violence epidemic in this country has gotten so bad, I cannot believe a state of emergency hasn't been declared by the president. This is a national emergency. I think we're coming close to what that's going to be needed. He may do that in the second term or whomever is the next president. Our people in charge now are cost costing uh, age, current, and future generations in monetary and mental health. That's not true, of course. Uh, Daniel Ledo says, Carefully, Egberto, you are super close to slander. I know you think you're just a small guy with a small audience, but that won't save you from being accountable from the things you say. I am not concerned about that because I only speak the verifiable truth. And, you know, those people who would want to sue when we present the truth for the whole public to see and expose them, that is one of the best deterrent one could have. Uh, Paul Fleming says, replying, uh, Egberto, were you in Austin to view personally you speak as such? Wasn't it Austin that has defunded the police? No. But, I mean, I know that's, a, that's what you guys like to talk about. Uh, Paul Fleming, your point, I don't know what that is about, but Mike Cisak said, it's sad to see how the left 
doesn't understand how much of a bully they are. Hmm. I find it ironic that we are bullies, yet we are the ones that get bullied too often, especially in red states. Find it ironic. But anyhow, let's go ahead and play the second video about how I think progressives sometimes fail when they're on TV that are doing the necessary things. Check this out. We'll take it on the other side. I watched a piece on CNN's uh, uh, State of the Union today that really sort of upset me. Uh, the topic was about Donald Trump, of course. You know, that is a central topic on many issues. But we had Bernie Sanders, uh, former political advisor, Faiz Shakir, uh, discussing the new morality of the Republican Party and how it has changed. It doesn't matter anymore that you're a philanderer. It doesn't matter anymore that you don't follow the moral code that the Republicans like to dictate. And he did a good job, Faiz uh, Fai Shakir, of exposing it. But you know what Scott Brown did? Scott Brown did a marginal, what I call a marginal false equivalence. And the problem is, as usual with many on the left, is they don't follow up the next step to put a nail in the coffin. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side because there was a very important piece that was missed by Faiz Shakir and everybody and the other progressive on the table to really put Scott, uh, Scott Brown in his place. Check this out. We'll take it on the other side. Faz Shakir, thank you so much for coming. Welcome to the you, to the yeah. State of the Union Roundtable. Uh, you worked for Bernie Sanders as a senior advisor. You know something about uh, fighting in a primary. Yeah, <laughs> there's, a, there's supposed to be good fights in primaries. I feel like, you know, I'm watching what's going on, on the right, though, and you're feeling like a loss of moral conversation. You used to have moral conversation in politics. You have legal conversations. I appreciate that there's concerns over whether the case and the statute of limitations and other issues are at play, but what happened to moral leadership? Do you, does anyone get concerned that a president who had an affair with a porn star while his wife just gave birth then paid her a bunch of money to try to win an election and turn off you know, a, a potential issue that would have killed him in a presidential election? No, no, shrug. And I think at that point, you're like wondering, where is moral leadership? But even from people on the right would say, OK, I have concerns with legal issues. However, morally, this is just not accorded with my values. And what happened to that? What happened to that kind of conversation on the I right? Mean, that sailed a long time ago, right? I mean, ever since 2016, it was very clear. This is a different Republican Party, and they were interested in amassing power at all costs. And all that morality talk that we lived through in the 90s and in the 80s, it's, it, it's gone. Well, respectfully, uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, Gary Hart, uh, let's not take the moral issue and, and all of a sudden think it's new. Uh, there's been indiscretions by previous president, uh, presidents. Uh, my concern is that you're opening up in a form of Pandora's box. This has never happened in our country's history. To take something that's a state issue, morph it after the statute of limitations passes into a federal issue. Uh, what happens if it's going to have a red state DA all of a sudden wants to take on one of yours? Uh, is that where we're going now? It's going to discourage people from running who are legitimately ready to serve this country. And it's going to create problems down the road. I mean, Trump led you into this degree of moral relativity, and I appreciate the points that, that uh, you know, his conduct might be just as bad as this person's conduct. What I would argue, my own perspective, is that his conduct lives in a reign of its own. Listen, uh, people took that into account when they voted for him. They knew about all his indiscretions. They knew all about his problems. They compared and measured between him and Hillary, and they chose him. Let's... Let God, I'm sorry. No, no. Moving forward, listen, you have a new cycle coming up. Does he have issues to overcome? Absolutely. But so does Joe Biden at 42 percent and all the things that, that are happening with him. What? Now, here's what's important, folks. Scott Brown said uh, in many parts of this interview, if you guys really don't want gerrymandering, go ahead and win so that you can set the things up. That's what he said subsequently. But here he states that, look. The American people looked at all the different faults that Donald Trump had. And you know what? In the first, in 2016, he still won. And he kept on making the case about, you know, most people wanted, uh, in, in, inferring that most people wanted Donald Trump. The thing that's missed here is even in 2016, Donald Trump lost by 3 million votes. In 2020, he lost by 7 million votes. The American people, for those who went out and vote and those in the public at large, they never supported Donald Trump. It's the 
design of a constitution that has destroyed democracy in this country that allowed somebody like Donald Trump to get in and that Faiz Shakir did not butt in and make that case that he didn't go in there and state the fact that, listen, let's remember, America never, ever supported Donald Trump. He's had his faction. He's had his faction of what, for those who tolerate what he does, the degeneracy, he's had that faction, but he has never had support. And that Faiz Shakir did not get in there was a missed opportunity to let all America know this man has never had majority support in the American body politic ever. We, and, and that is what I like to make known to folks. We have to remind Americans that no, at no time, at no time did he have the match. There is, the, there is another thing, accusations in a mirror. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I was talking about, Michael Rudnan. All right, Daniel Lado. Nope. Uh, to Eric Hayes. Nope, he was not, but he knows exactly what happened even better. He knows what Perry was thinking and his secret motivation. Egberto has made accusations against Perry today that could definitely result in a lawsuit. Really? I don't think so. A jury of his peers convicted him for what? Murder. He is a murderer. Period. A convicted murderer. And to be pardoned, remember, he has to admit his guilt to be pardoned for said guilt. Let's remember that. Just remember that, okay? All right. Um, Kasmarik makes Judge Allen Island Cannon look like King Solomon and John Marshall rolled into one. But what of Justice Thomas? He is just a pathetic loser. He doesn't, first of all, I hate to put it this way, but he never had the intellect to be on the Supreme Court, which is one of the reasons he always kept quiet. He never spoke, and when he talks... He talks with much less authority than he than than the than the position dictates. So, you know what can I say? All right, uh, let's see. Opinion: The worst federal judge in America. How has a name? Washington Post. Judge Cax Merrick. Well, what can I say? Uh, I still think it's it's ju it's Judge Thomas, though. I still think it's Judge Thomas. All right, Michael Ronan says being anti-racist and seeking equity for people. Is bullying? I don't think so. And Rudden, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's not bullying. It's not bullying. It's not bullying. Uh, Eric Hayes asks, does Faiz hold the money Sanders makes via capitalism on his book? Uh, Sanders does not make money via capitalism. Sanders makes money via free enterprise. Sanders does not sell stocks in his company. And where other people can monetize by trading his stock as you would coins at a casino. So no, uh, he does not practice capitalism. If that's what you think is capitalism, it is exactly the reason why we have been unable to make free enterprise the preeminent form of our economic system. Because you actually think what Sanders is doing is capitalism. You probably think me selling my books as well as capitalism. It's not capitalism. It's free enterprise. Learn the difference. It's very important to learn the difference. Remember, what China does is no different than what America does when it comes to the economic system and the corporatocracy. They are capitalists, sir. Please, please, please understand the difference, my brother. Please understand the difference. Okay, uh, Paul Fleming says Trump is an autocrat that has to go to jail to prevent smarter dictator want to be at bay. I like that. I like that. That makes a lot of sense. And of course, we have Eric Hayes. Gilberto, you are so full of the Sanders greenhouse gas. Hmm. I wouldn't mind that, right? Because uh, what can I say? Uh, you know, somehow. I think that's a compliment. Egberto is Sanders gaslighting. No, Egberto is just telling the truth. I mean, sometimes it's difficult to hear, especially when you choose to be willfully ignorant. But I still love you. You're still part of the family. You know, I have a sister who voted for Trump. 
I have good friends who voted for Trump. You know, so no, we're we're okay. We're okay. Carcock says Eric Hayes is so full of crap. It is not even funny. Eric Hayes is a nice guy. I love Eric. I really do. And and the dough too. Of course, all my progressives in here, I give a big hug. Daniel Little says, I wonder sometimes if Egberto even knows what he's saying or his short-term memory is shot. No, Egberto, you did not call him a murderer. Yes, he's a murderer. You call him a cold-blooded murderer. Yes, that's what he is. And then proceeded to tell us he murdered in cold blood, premeditated. Yes, he did. As well as ascribing motivation. Yes, I did. There's a motivation in his social media. I think any sane uh, prosecutor would and has used it. Bruce Pollard said better, better CO2 than methane. Yeah, methane is a much more uh, greenhouse gas than is CO2. Egberto, pardon mine reading this one out. Egberto, in 2016, Trump prevented the information that he paid off a porn star be known. That said, do you really think sufficient numbers of conservatives would wouldn't have voted for Trump in 2016 because he raw dogged a porn star after his wife gave birth, then covered up a sex scandal. Conservatives only feign moral outrage when it's one of their opposition caught. And that's so true. How do we know? Trump. How do we know? All the degenerates that, that have done those crazy things and got elected after it's been found out. So it's true. It is absolutely true. Anyway, folks, uh, we are going to be getting ready to get out of here. I'd like to ask all of you who are our listeners to please support the program. We are in need of your support like never before. Please go ahead and support us in one of many ways. You can support us by becoming a patron. How do you become a patron? You can become a patron by going to politicsdoneright.com slash patron, politicsdoneright.com slash patron. You can also support us by going to our PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal. Alternatively, you can just, if you are on YouTube right now, click that join button and say, I want to join the PDR Posse and want to get Egberto a coffee or so a month. Just go to politicsandright.com slash YouTube or click join if you are already on YouTube. You can also join us on Facebook. You can subscribe to us on Facebook as well. And likewise, shop at our store, politicsandright.com slash store. Or go ahead and get our books, which I ask you so kindly. I promise you would enjoy the books, politicsandright.com slash books. But most of all, I am sure inside of this last link, politicsandright.com slash support, you will find an option to support this program to ensure that we can remain doing what we do. We could not do this without you. I have wonderful supporters. I just need about four times the amount of supporters that we have right now. So please consider being a part of the PDR Posse. Consider supporting what we do because this is the most important thing in our society today. Taking back our government. Taking back our government. One la last few things to read. Michael, um, Daniel Lado has a last statement. He says, so if Egberto Willis points a gun at me while yelling and smashing my window, I should know he doesn't intend to kill me with the gun he's pointed at me. And if I get luck and shoot first, I'm a cold-blooded killer. This is progressive logic. Again, that's not what occurred in Austin. I know you'd like to believe that, but all the eyewitnesses say that just did not happen. So, my name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this baby. I am what? Ow. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us.